What are the indications for treating hyperparathyroidism and having surgery? I'm Dr. Bob Aklarion from Center for Advanced Parathyroid Surgery. Um, that is a very good question. Sometimes the answer is very obvious. If you had osteoporosis that's progressing, you're getting fractures from low impact uh, injury, um, breaking bones that shouldn't even break with, with, the, with what you were doing. If you're passing kidney stones or if your kidney is malfunctioning, those are easy concepts to wrap your head around and see, knowing that you need surgery to prevent the progression of bone loss, bone fractures, or kidney disease, right? Mm -hmm. But what if you don't have those? What if you are not getting fractured? What if your kidney is functioning perfectly? Then when do you decide on having parathyroid surgery? And that's a very good question. So let's do it through looking at a case. This is a 51-year-old postmenopausal woman who complains of fatigue, memory loss, anxiety, uh, body aches, and states, I feel old, which is a very com common complaint in people who have hyperparathyroidism. They feel like they all of a sudden just got older. She has not been able to work for the past few years. All right. Now, when the labs were done, her calcium was 10.4, which is just a little bit above the normal of 10.2. Her PTH levels are 75, which is only slightly elevated above the upper limit of normal of 65. Vitamin D is low normal, but normal. And 24 iron calcium is only 200, right? And not above that mark of 400. That's, that's often used for indication of surgery. And her bone density showed osteopenia, not osteoporosis, right? So does this person qualify to have surgery, right? So first, let's talk about the most common symptoms with hyperparathyroidism. 96% of people who have hyperparathyroidism complain of fatigue, right? That's their most common complaint. Uh, bone pain, joint pain, muscle achiness and weakness are next. Concentration issues, which can oftentimes lead to memory problems and then irritability and anxiety and depression sleep problems, nighttime urination, frequent urination. Um, thirst, increased thirst, um, upset stomach, acid issues and heartburn, constipation, slowing of the intestines and abdominal pain. Some people may have incontinence, some people may have nausea and vomiting. These are the most common symptoms. And these are not exclusive to hyperparathyroidism. All sorts of diseases can give you these complex combination of symptoms that that may not clue your doctor into you having hyperparathyroidism or this being associated, because these are not commonly known to be associated with hyperparathyroidism by people who don't have expertise in parathyroid disease. So if you go to your primary doctor and complain of joint pain and fatigue and irritability and anxiety, the first thing they think of is absolutely not hyperparathyroidism, even though it should be part of their differential, right? And so if you have these symptoms, but are not diagnosed well, I encourage you to look at your calcium, pH, and vitamin D to see if you have hyperparathyroidism, right? But let's say you, you finally get the diagnosis, your calcium is slightly elevated, pTH is slightly elevated. Is this an indication for surgery? There is an international group of endocrinologists and endocrine surgeons or parathyroid surgeons that get together every few years to look at the literature and see if there's the literature can guide them as to when the surgery is indicated. So the last time they got together was 2013, right? The first time was 1990. And they looked at possible indications for someone who's asymptomatic. What they call asymptomatic is someone who doesn't get fragility fractures or low impact fractures, disproportionate fractures to the impact, or are not passing kidney stones or don't have kidney failure, right? So if you don't have uh, fractures and you're not passing kidney stones or your kidneys functioning properly, the, then those are the symptoms that they consider. If you don't have those, then they look at other measures to decide if you need surgery. The measures they look at is your calcium level, right? One unit above normal, they say, is an indication for surgery. So if the upper limit of normal in your lab is 10.2, if your calcium is 11.3 or higher, then they consider that indication for surgery. If you do a bone density study and it shows that you have osteoporosis, right? So 
If the bone density says you have osteoporosis, that's an indication for surgery. If you check your kidney function and your kidney is malfunctioning and not clearing stuff, called, they call it creatinine clearance, is less than 60, that's an indication for surgery. If you're 24 and your calcium shows more calcium, more than 400 units per, in a 24 hour period, that's an indication for surgery. Uh, if you're passing kidney stones or if you have scans that show that you have kidney stones or kidney stones that are going through the rest of your system that are got, gotten to your bladder and so on, that's an indication for surgery. Or if you're under the age of 50, because they say age of 50 is when if you're gonna have a long life ahead of you and if you're 45 years old and you have hyperparathyroidism, you have enough life left in you to develop, excuse me, complications from that, right? So what, how, how's the science as it relates to that? Well, the one unit above normal, they say is a strong recommendation, but there's low quality evidence showing that that one unit above normal is meaningful. And there's st studies that show that that the amount of calcium of normal doesn't necessarily dictate how, how this disease imp is impacting you and how much symptoms you have. So one unit above normal is just an uh, arbitrary number without really science proving that it's meaningful. Bone density. When there is bone loss, when there's progressive bone loss, there's absolutely strong evidence, scientific evidence showing that hyperparathyroidism can cause it and that you can reverse it by doing surgery, right? And that's really important, okay? Kidney malfunction. So the decision to do surgery when you're 25 year in calcium is above 400 or you have kidney malfunction is a weak recommendation and low quality evidence to support it, right? So there's not a lot of evidence here to support that claim, okay? That's, that's disheartening, right? And the reason for that is that once your kidney is damaged, right? If you correct the hypercalcemia, uh, the increased load of calcium on your kidney, does that reverse the kidney malfunction? And the research shows that it doesn't necessarily reverse it, but it can potentially stop it from progressing. So it is good to treat it, right? But the evidence of improvement is lacking. Does, does it stop kidney stones from forming? Well. When you have kidney stones, uh, you have multiple microscopic stones in there still. So when you correct the hyperparathyroidism and bring the calcium down, those microscopic kidney stones that don't show up on the scans are still there. And they may be a source of other calciums that normally filter out to attach to it and make it bigger. So the study shows that for at least 10 years after treating hyperparathyroidism, you can continue to make stones, right? The frequency may decrease, and the, the studies show that the frequency of ER visits, they're getting bad kidney stones, decreases and diminishes over time, right? Um, and then the lastly, age under 50. There, it's a very strong recommendation. There's moderate quality research that shows if you're under the age of 50 and you have absolutely no symptoms, it's a good idea to do surgery because you have such a long life, life ahead of you that you will develop some problem with it and should have it treated, right? So. The latest version of these uh, guidelines and recommendations are shifting away from finding a reason to do surgery to finding a reason not to do surgery. And they recommend that you do all sorts of tests to, to prove to yourself that you don't need testing, you don't need surgery. You need to do, um, obviously, labs to look at your labs and see how they're changing and progressing. You need to look at your bone density, but the bone density study alone is not enough. You need to do special studies for your spine because the spine doesn't show. When you're doing the bone density study, you have to specifically ask for them to look at your forearm because the forearm is most affected by hyperparathyroidism. And if they're not checking your forearm, they may not find enough indication of bone loss, right? Special tests for the spine is a special bone density study or CT scans to see if there's any fractures in the spine. Uh, in terms of the kidney function, they, they not only recommend that you get the 24 hour urine calcium, they, need to, they want you to do a stone risk analysis based on your urine to see if you have increased uh, chance of making stones. If so, that's an indication. You do imaging of your abdomen to see if there's anything, any stones, anywhere, CT scans, ultrasounds, or even x-rays. And then um, look at bone turnover, uh, uh, markers, um, 
uh, bone specific alkaline phosphatase or osteocalcin um, and so on um, then you can do uh, DNA testing to see if any, you have any genetic predisposition so they recommend that you do a very comprehensive study to to see if there's any reason for you to have surgery to treat your hyperparathyroidism right but let's look at this patient that we have she's 51 years old so she's above the age 50 right she has multiple symptoms that are causing her to be debilitated and not work her calcium is not one unit above normal um, her 24 year calcium is not 400 and her kidney function is still normal her bone density shows that she has osteopenia so she's close to osteoporosis but doesn't have osteoporosis so based on this she doesn't qualify for surgery right does that make sense for someone who's feeling as terrible as she is she's not able to work and for her not to have uh, surgery and treat that so i would say look at those guidelines do all the studies necessary to help right to figure out if you should do surgery or not right in absence of that if you have any of those symptoms that are on the list of symptoms that i just listed um uh, it's do if you do have those symptoms and you feel like they're impacting your life then i think you should have treatment because i think the reversal of symptoms really has to do with how severe is your hyperparathyroidism, meaning how much is the difference between natural calcium levels and yours may be different, you know, anywhere in the range of normal and the calcium you have. So if the difference is wider and the longer you have this disease, the more impact that difference in calcium is gonna have on your symptoms and your quality of life and the potential for reversal of symptoms, right? So um, I think if you're having symptoms that are affecting your life, and changing the quality of your life, or if you do the studies and show good indications for surgery, then you should do should do surgery. You should treat your hyperparathyroidism. A good news about hyperparathyroidism is that every person who has treatment for hyperparathyroidism, has a successful parathyroid surgery, will have improvement in their bone density. Even if their bone density is normal, their bone density will improve. And that improvement in bone density in this study from Columbia University, which was done over a 20 plus year time span, showed even 15 years after having successful parathyroid surgery, your bone density will be 10% higher than before surgery. And that is a miraculous improvement. And uh, Dr. Bollerslav from Sweden, who did the studies on people who have mild increases in calcium, showed if you were to treat them surgically, all their bone densities will improve. So um, your bone density for sure will, will improve with parathyroid treatment and other symptoms can also. Not, not all of them will, but most of them can improve given enough time. So if you have hyperparathyroidism, if it's affecting the quality of your life, seek treatment, Get see an expert surgeon who does more than 50 parathyroid surgeries a year, who has a vested interest in taking care of you, in treating parathyroid patients and help get your life in a better place and have better quality of life. Hopefully this is helpful, be well. If you find this video helpful, please like it, make comments so we know what kind of videos we can help for you to make this experience better for you. This is a tough journey when you have hyperparathyroidism, I know that, and I'd be happy to help. And please subscribe to our channel, be well.